I specifically referred to the knob on this as the intensity knob, not the frequency, or not the volume knob, and we're going to talk about why that is. The intensity of sound. The symbol is a capital I, and it is power over area. Now, remind me, what is the shape of the sound as it moves out from the source, Dan? It looks like a circle every time I draw it on the board, but it's not. It's a sphere, remember? It's just a circle on the board because I can only draw in two dimensions. I'm not that skilled. So the area then is going to be the area of a sphere. The area of a sphere. Song? Uh, 4 times pi r squared. Nice, 4 pi r squared. So the area of our sphere is going to be 4 pi r squared. So the intensity is power over 4 pi r squared. Now, if you look at that just as a visual representation, the sound decreases as we move away. And that sound has to cover the entire surface of the sphere as it gets farther and farther away. So you can clearly see that it decreases quite a bit. It decreases as 1 over r squared. Dimensions for intensity. Krauss, what are the dimensions for power? Is that watts? It is watts divided by uh, area? Um, meters squared. So intensity is in watts per meter squared. <coughs> All right. uh, it was a um, book optional day, but if you have your book on page 489, I'm going to talk about this figure which is in your book. This is uh, a figure that talks about and illustrates what we can hear and uh, compares the frequency that we can hear and the intensity that we can hear it at. Now, the intensity is in, again, watts per meter squared. And we're going to start out by talking about this line right here, which is called the threshold of hearing. What do you think, Hannah, the threshold of hearing? Uh, okay, it's not the frequency, but rather the lowest intensity that you can hear at specific frequencies. Because notice, one thing you should realize about the threshold of hearing is that the threshold of hearing is dependent on the frequency, right? You can see that we can hear certain frequencies better than others. From approximately 500 to, I don't know, 7,000 is a very good area for us to hear, specifically around the, the two to 4,000 range is a very good range for us to be able to hear sound. So let's talk about that for a minute with our um, variable frequency generator. Remember, I called this the intensity knob. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the intensity knob right here at about, I don't know, we'll go with maybe 25. Okay. So right now, do you hear it? Not really. Okay. So I'm going to oh, actually all the way down to 20. So we'll start at 20. Do you hear it wrong? I, I don't know. Okay. So we're going to increase the frequency. Do you hear it now? Yeah. 100 hertz. Still can hear it. 200 hertz. We're still at 200 hertz, 300 hertz, 400 hertz, 500, 600, 7, 1,000 hertz, 2,000 hertz. Is this louder? Yeah. Feels like it. No. Is this louder? No. Is it more intense? No. This is the same intensity. Does it seem louder to you? You hear this frequency better. Right? But notice the intensity was exactly the same as when I had it down at 20 hertz. Okay? We started at some intensity. We'll say, I don't know what it was, maybe right around here, right? At 20 hertz, we couldn't hear that. As we got, as I increased the frequency, the, uh, the intensity above the threshold of hearing increased, right? 
So as we got farther and farther, closer to the frequency that we can hear best, it seemed like it was louder, but it was not. The intensity was the same, but our interpretation of it, we could hear that particular frequency better. Okay, let's talk about another line on here, the very top line, called the threshold of pain. <coughs> Danner, what do you think the threshold of pain is? It's the intensity at which you hear or you feel pain from the sound, right? The threshold of pain. Now, class, is the threshold of pain frequency dependent? Yeah. yeah. Is it more or less frequency dependent than the threshold of hearing? Uh, less. You can see it's actually much less frequency dependent than the threshold of hearing. I'm now going to read from your textbook again. Here we go. Exposure to sounds above the threshold of pain can cause immediate damage to the ear even if no pain is felt. Prolonged exposure to sounds of lower intensities can also damage the ear. For this reason, many rock musicians wear earplugs during their performances, and some rock stars must wear hearing aids. And some rock stars must wear hearing aids. And some rock stars must wear hearing aids. Why, Andrew Chen, must some rock stars wear hearing aids? Because the music damages their hearing. Because they suffer from what I like to call voluntary early onset presbycusis. Oh. Voluntary early onset presbycusis. Class, voluntary meaning? I don't choose to do You're choosing to do so. Early onset. Mm -hmm. Happens before it should. Presbycusis. Old ears or loss of hearing. As you get older, it is a natural function of your body that you start to lose some of your hearing. I am 39. I suffer from presbycusis. When I first started doing this 12 years ago, I could hear all the way up to 19,000 hertz. Now, I cut off around 17,000 hertz because I am 12 years older and my ears are getting old. Some of you, cut off at or around the same time I did, or same frequency I did, true? That's because, number one, we're all built differently, so you might have started at a different location, right? You might have started with a different hearing range. But number two, some of you do suffer from voluntary early onset presbycusis. Please, fight voluntary early onset presbycusis. You can do this in a number of ways. You can turn down the volume, step one, or the intensity, depending on how you look at it. Step two, you can try noise canceling headphones, right? Or even the, the headphones that go over your ears, because then they actually muffle out the sound as well, so that they, they cancel that out a little bit. Any, anything you can do to decrease the volume at which you listen to music is good. True? Mm. My favorite is so when I'm in my vehicle at the stop sign. Oh, it's stoplight better. And I can feel the music coming from the vehicle next to me. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I don't I can't like do it because it's terrible, but you got those subwoofers, they're like giants in the back of the vehicle. Right? Now, let's talk about that for a minute. The subwoofer in general is for the frequencies that are hundred hertz and lower, between two hundred twenty and one hundred hertz. Now if you'll notice, the threshold of hearing is very high in that frequency range, right? Which means you need a very intense sound in the low frequency range, in the subwoofer range, in order to have it be something that is you perceive as loud, correct? But would you agree that you are then closer to the threshold of hearing and therefore closer to doing damage to your ears if you are listening to what you perceive as loud volume low frequency sounds? Just pointing it out, just trying to help in the long run. 